Hello, Guru Nation. A very special hello to you guys and gals out there. We are trying, me and Judy, who I'm interviewing today, who is one of the founding members of Latinos in Clinical Research, we are trying our hardest, guys, to get traffic over to latinosinclinicalresearch.com uh, and to the YouTube channel. So we're making this why Latinos should consider site ownership. And it's not just for Latinos. Latinos in clinical research, obviously the themes are around Latinos in research. That's the name, Latinos in clinical research. This is for everyone. All ethnicities welcome. So let's start with why someone should consider site ownership. I've interviewed Judy on the show before. She's the owner of Sun Valley Research in Imperial, California. Um, Judy, how's it going? Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So you started, you were an employee a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I think you, we both got started around the same time, like 05, is it? When you got 04, started? I think, yeah. 04, 04. yeah. So same time, <laughs> 04, 05. I was full-time employee too. You jumped at the opportunity. And did you ever, like as a kid, have entrepreneurial tendencies? Or was this like a surprise to you as well? No, actually, I now that I think about it, you know, as you get older, you start looking back. <laughs> um, but I used to go to the swap meet with my mom. I mean, we started going when I don't know, we were like, I was five years old, and I went all the way up to my teenage years. That's how my mom made extra money. We were there every weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And after doing it so many years, you learn, it's kind of like a mini business you're running, you know, you're reselling stuff, you're making a profit, we yeah. used to buy stuff at garage sales and take it to a swap meet and sell it on the weekends. And so <laughs> I mean, I never realized I was gonna go that route and get into business until I got older. And then I think about it. And I did have that foundation of a little bit of the business side of it through my mom in the swap meet, even mm. you know it wasn't an official type business, but yeah, that's where, that's where I got started. But like when and you were in there, college, when you were in college, did you think, okay, when I graduate, I'm going to own, you, you didn't know what research clinic was maybe, but I'm going to be a business owner. No, I was pre-med. And so I always thought I was going to go to med school. And then probably my third year into it, I was like, no, nah, I don't know if that's where I'm going to go. Uh, I think my third or fourth year, I started working at the research center, I fell into clinical research. And then that was it. But I never thought about owning my own site, even being a part owner. I never considered it. I think I was more the coordinator moving up to a manager, possibly becoming a CRA in the future, just going up that, that ladder. Um, but then I got this opportunity when I left the the first research company I got to start a site and I took it. I didn't know 100% what I was doing. I did get a little bit of advice and you just learn as you go. And that was 13 years ago. <laughs> so what's, now here I am. And, and you're very passionate. I mean, obviously, you're one of the founding members of the Latinos in Clinical Research. You're very passionate about getting more Latinos enrolled in clinical research, especially where your site is located. It's like 90% Hispanic, right? In that area. I mean, um, what are some of the issues that you've seen and what, you know, encouraging more people, but specifically Hispanics in your case, to get into research? What problems do you hope that that will solve? You know, just one person at yeah. a time, maybe. Yeah, I guess the big thing is the educational part of it. Um, as a participant, um, they're not very aware of clinical trials in my community. Um, there's not a lot of information out there. Um, it's really hard to, um, to kind of advertise. I mean, we do it, but we're only reaching so many people, um, not like in larger cities. And then on the other side of it, trying to find staff to work in clinical research that have any any type of experience is nearly impossible in Imperial County. It, mm -hmm. I would have to go to a larger city to attract anybody. Um, so anybody I do bring on, either I train from the bottom up or they start off as an intern, they volunteer. And then I go from there and hopefully, you know, most of, a lot of times they do work out, sometimes they don't. Um, so I, I would say that's the hardest part, the educational. People don't really know about research if they did then I think they'd be more willing to participate, but at the same time, more willing to go into the industry. So those are two different things that I think I'm dealing with in my community specifically that I would like to change. And it's always been an issue since we started 13 years 
into it and it still continues to be an issue. Mm. Um, but I think there's a lot of things we can do to make it better each year and try to help the community so we can educate um, and hopefully provide more resources to communities like mine. Yeah, see so your background, and that's great. And this is what we're going to try to promote for the Latinos in Clinic Research. Your background is actually, I remember now from when I interviewed you, this was like six months ago, but it felt like forever because of coronavirus. But um, your background is like almost exactly like mine pre-med. I, I had entrepreneurial tendencies as a kid, but I didn't really even realize it until mm-hmm. I started doing business. So in college, I just wanted pre-med. Then I wanted like to be a CRA because my dad told me that's a good job. So Mm -hmm. all I wanted was like a decent job and to be comfortable. That's what I thought I wanted because I, you know, I was like in college, you know, you're just in your own world. But then it wasn't until I took the jump and started the site that I realized, man, like this is who I'm supposed to be entrepreneur. This opened up like so many opportunities. Then it's like I had the blinders off and I could see everything. And I was like, okay, business is like the way to go. And then I started remembering, okay, when I was a kid, I used to like sell pets, but they were roly polies, but I attracted people and they would buy them. And I was like, all this making sense. Like I was supposed to be an entrepreneur. And I think 2020 is making a lot of people realize, unfortunately, your job is not stable no matter where you are. Clinical research, probably the most stable, but like Mm -hmm. just you're, if you're a W2, your job is not stable. You need to learn how to be self-sufficient. I think everybody who's in healthcare has opportunity to have a side business. Who knows? Maybe that side business grows into your real business. I'm not telling anyone to quit right. their job. That's irresponsible, but start a side business. You work from nine to five. And then what you do from five till you go to bed or 6 a.m. till where you go to work, that's on you. And that's your business. There's tax benefits, all kind of stuff. So it would be cool to see more people getting into that, specifically Latinos in areas like yours. I mean, if they can get into like see the opportunities that that come across, like being a vendor for for uh for Hispanic sites like like Latin speaking, mm-hmm. recruiting patients that that speak Spanish or bilingual. There's a lot of opportunity all over clinical research. So what are your thoughts on that as we wrap up? Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, so on the side, aside from doing what I do in clinical research, I have a bookkeeping business that I run on my own. I'm an independent bookkeeper. So I have been doing it for about 13, 14 years too. So I have a good financial background. I'm able to manage our finances within my clinic. I also do the bookkeeping for my PI's private practice. And I do the bookkeeping for several other clients in San Diego. So I think, as you mentioned, you know, we can have these different sources of income and do different things, um, as long as we can handle what, you know, our main job. And then if you want to do these side jobs, I mean, it's possible, it's doable, especially like you mentioned in 2020, I think a lot of people are more aware of that. And they're looking for different opportunities. And you should because there is a lot out there you can do besides Uh, that one job. (laughs) Clinical research welcomes is very welcoming to all. It doesn't care where you're from, what language you speak. Matter of fact, the more the better, the more diverse, the better. That's the whole point with the Latinos in clinical research. That's what we're trying to do. So thank you very much, Judy. Continue to be an inspiration to everybody. Let's uh, keep doing these monthly Latinos in clinical research meetups. Uh, Links to Judy's LinkedIn will be in underneath the video description. And the link to the Latinos in clinical research website will be there. Sign up. You don't want to miss out. Judy, tell them they don't want to miss out. And can you tell them in English and then tell them real quick why they need to join in Spanish? I want to see if I understand. (laughs) Everyone, don't miss out. Sign up for Latinos in Clinical Research. We're going to be sharing so much information next year, resources, hopefully, to help um, different people in the industry and come together and work together. Todos vayan a Latinos in Clinical Research website. Pónganse, métanse su correo electrónico. El año que viene vamos a tener mucha información para ustedes, para sus negocios. Y a ver, nos juntamos cada mes y vamos a tener diferentes temas que vamos a hablar para ayudarlos en el año que viene. Muchas informaciones. (laughs) Thank you very much. I love it. And uh, I'm going to splice that last part out just for the Instagram. And thank you very much, Judy. Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. And we'll catch you all later, right? Bye-bye.